Hey, what is going on guys? Max Settings here and welcome back to another review. In today's review, we are going to be taking a look at the Odyssey LCD GX. Now this is Odyssey's flagship uh, gaming headset. And before we hop into the review, I just need to give a disclaimer that this headphone was provided for review by headphones.com. Headphones.com, for those of you that don't know, is the online audio retailer with the 365 day return policy. So if you purchase something from them, you have a full 365 days to decide if you like it and want to keep it. If not, you can return for a full refund. So anyway, once again, big thanks to them for sending this headphone out for review, but also a disclaimer, I am in no way paid by them for any influence on my opinion. I don't get any affiliates for the sales of anything. This was just uh, given, or not given, sent to me uh, in exchange for my honest review, and it will be going back to them when I am done. So big shout out to them once again. Okay, so let's discuss here what the Odyssey LCD GX is. Now, as I previously mentioned, this is Odyssey's flagship gaming headset. Their other one being the Odyssey Mobius that I have reviewed previously. And the LCD GX is an interesting proposition. When I first saw it and heard what it was, I definitely wrote it off. You know, oh, it's just a gaming headset. And it's also shares similarities to the MX4 here, which we'll talk about in just a second. But I think Odyssey did a bit of a misservice by labeling this as a gaming headset because this is a very, very competent headphone in general. So the LCD GX is a LCD MX4, which is this guy over here, but it is single sided and no phaser. So this is more or less the LCD X diaphragm the LCD four magnets, but only on one side and no phaser array. That is what this headphone is. And it comes in at a $900 price tag, $899. Now for that price, you get the headphones. You also get the big Odyssey carrying case that I've shown before, but I thought I'd throw it up here. So let's get this out of the way. And you also get two cables, which we will show in a bit. So let's get specs out of the way here. So the LCD GX is a $899 planar magnetic headphone with an impedance of 20 ohms, a sensitivity of 100 dB a milliwatt, and Odyssey lists the weight at 460 grams. However, on my particular pair, I weighed it in at 495 grams. So moving on into the build of the LCD GX, the LCD GX is in Odyssey's magnesium chassis, which is a little bit different from their traditional chassis, like on the LCD X over here, or the two, three, or the four. So you have a complete magnesium chassis all around, magnesium cups and yokes, which reduces the weight quite a bit. Uh, the standard new Odyssey suspension style headband. This one has memory foam pads that are protein leather, uh, no phaser array in there, as I already mentioned, so if your ear was smashing up against these and other Odysseys and you feel the sharp edges of the phaser, you will not have that problem on the GX. Red grills, which is the gamer aesthetic, but frankly I quite like it because I like black and red as many of you have seen by my HD800 uh, paint job. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I quite like the look, but it feels very, very nice, um, very light in the hand, much lighter than other Odysseys for those of you that have handled them. It just feels very much lighter and a little bit more ergonomic than the heavier Odysseys like the 2, the 3, and the 4. And that reduced weight definitely helps with the comfort. This is definitely the most comfortable uh, full-sized Odyssey LCD headphone, in my opinion, because, you know, it has the same headband as the rest of them, I guess, except for the carbon fibers, but, and it's the lightest with the same pads, more or less. So all in all, it's just the same comfort as Odyssey with less weight. And this weighs roughly about what a Focal Utopia weighs, but I think this has a better headband system than the Utopia. So I find this a very comfortable headphone, but I already found even the LCD4 at 735 grams, very comfortable. So this at like 230 grams less, uh, ends up being a very comfortable headphone for me. So moving on into the cables, the GX comes with the standard Odyssey quarter inch cable like all modern Odysseys do, except for the LCD4, which has a little bit uh, nicer, fancier one. But once again, I quite like this cable. It's a four strand braid, fairly flexible, looks nice, it feels pretty good. 
So very much like this cable. But also included with the GX is the microphone cable. And as you can see, it is the mini four pin XLR connectors, but one side has a uh, microphone with a pop filter. And there is also a inline uh, mic mute switch here. Uh, this cable is you know, not as nice as the braided one. It's just kind of a straight cable and it terminates in a four pole, three and a half millimeter. However, of note, there is a four pole splitter. So you can split it off to a, a uh, you know, a separate headphone and mic jack if you have a like onboard audio sound card or something like a shit hell, something along those lines. And we will go on ahead and do a mic test for this. But also of note, Odyssey is currently selling this cable for $50 as of the time of recording. I believe it retails at about 110. But this can be used on any headphones that use mini four pin connectors. So any other Odyssey's ZMF, uh, the Mezzi Empyrean, the Aurora Borealis, the HEDD headphone. Uh, and so any headphone that uses mini four pin connectors can take this um, mic cable, even the AB1266. So we will go on ahead and do a microphone test of the LCD GX. Okay, so here we are with the Odyssey LCD GX included microphone. I think this microphone is pretty decent. I think it sounds roughly about how the Odyssey Mobius microphone sounded. I wouldn't be surprised if it was very similar or almost the same microphone. The included pop filter I think does have a little bit too much in terms of wind noise from uh, plosives and even just from talking. But uh, maybe if you change the positioning a little bit, uh, I think you could get it a little bit better in terms of that. But all in all, this is a fairly decent microphone for gaming or conferencing. I wouldn't use it for any vocal recording work. Uh, it obviously doesn't sound as good as a decent standalone desktop microphone. But for, once again, gaming or phone calls, conference calls, it's definitely a very serviceable microphone. So it gets the pass from me and it is a lot better than a lot of gaming headset microphones. So as for power requirements, the GX is not very hard to drive. It's 20 ohms and it's decently efficient. Um, depending on your source, it can be a little bit harder to drive than stuff like the LCD2 because it will take more current, but all in all, it is fairly easy to drive and I think most phones should get this thing going fairly well. So nothing too much to worry about on the power of the LCD GX. Okay, so now moving on into the sound of the LCD GX. So when this headphone first came out, I have to admit that I did kind of write it off and I was like, oh, they're just part stumping the LCD MX4 because it's not selling that well. And Odyssey discounted the LCD MX4 on Black Friday for half off brand new. So, you know, they're just getting rid of parts and they just figured, you know, let's make it black and red, slap a mic on it. And, you know, we'll just get the gamer crowd to buy it up. You know, the classic, you know, low effort gaming headset strategy. But when I heard it at Can Jam this year, this thing really shocked me. And that's why I asked for a review sample from headphones.com. And I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it here. The LCD GX has the best frequency response of any full-sized LCD headphone. And with that being said, let's hop on into the frequency response. <laughs> So the LCD GX, I actually have had two of them. The first one that they sent me actually broke in shipping because whoever had it before me did not pack it right and one of the yokes broke. But anyway, I've heard two of them. Um, I actually think I like the sec the first one I had a little bit more because Odyssey unit variance is still a thing, especially on the LCD X, which this uses the X diaphragm. So you're gonna have some unit variance. But anyway, so Starting with the bass, the bass is flat down to 20 hertz as you expect from an Odyssey. Now, the ears graph is very, very inaccurate with this one. I've always mentioned that it makes Odysseys look worse than they are, but this one more so in particular sounds nothing like what the ears graph shows. So I will have it up, but it does not sound like what the graph shows. So most Odysseys you get that like one, one and a half K, a little bit of shout, and then it just drops off now this thing still drops off, it is still an Odyssey, but it is much, much less than the other LCDs. I think at the lowest point, at around 4.5K, I think this only rolls off about 5 dB. 
And then after that, you know, the treble comes back up to the f somewhat typical um, that like 9K Odyssey peak, but it's not as bright as like the other ones, like the two, the three, and the four is a much more severe and higher peak. I don't think the nine to 10K peak on the GX comes all the way back up in line with where the lower mids were like it does on the other ones. I think it still holds slightly below. So it's a little bit less grading of that 9, 10K treble peak. So all in all, this thing has still an Odyssey FR, but much less so than any of the other ones, including the four. This one is much less severe. The mid-range sounds much more normal. The strings sound much more in line. And this is the best frequency response stock of any full-sized Odyssey LCD headphone. So now let's move on into the dynamics. So overall, uh, macro dynamics is you know decent, but in terms of slam, that is where the GX suffers. Compared to you know the LCD2 and the two classic, which are going to be you know the ones that everybody's going to ask to compare to, which we'll talk about in a little bit later. This bass is a little bit limper and more smoothed over than it is on the two, in, the two phaser and the two classic, in my opinion, for memory. And it's also behind the X and the MX4, which are sitting here. So the bass in this one is the limper and smoothed over. I think it's overall the limpest uh, in terms of slam on the full-sized LCD lineup. But overall micro detail across the rest of the frequency response is decent and I think does hold up to the two and the two classic from memory. In terms of timbre, it is going to be the standard Odyssey plasticky timbre, although this one sounds better than the other ones do uh, because the FR is not as recessed, so strings and vocals come off a lot more uh, natural and traditional sounding to me. Now, in terms of soundstage, it's still a wide headphone, but it does sound less wide than other Odysseys because the mid-range is much more in line. Whereas, I've mentioned this before, if you have a really recessed upper mid-range, it does give the illusion of soundstage. So when you bring the mid-range back up a lot, like it is on the GX compared to other Odysseys, it sounds like it has less stage. However, it is still a quite wide soundstage. Imaging is also quite good. It images uh, fairly well. Nothing uh, exceptional, but definitely images well enough for my liking. And then in terms of detail, I think it holds up to the LCD2 in detail, the, the two-phaser detail from my memory. It's been a while since I've had that LCD2, but from memory, I think it holds up. If, it's, if it falls short, it falls barely short of the LCD2 phasered, but I personally think it does hold up in terms of detail to the two phasered. So that is the overview of the sound on the LCD GX. Okay, so as for comparisons here, I'm gonna hold off comparing them to the X and the MX4 because the next video, which is gonna go up right after this one, is going to be a review of the X and the MX4 and comparing them to the GX. So we're not gonna talk about this compared to these in this video, that will be the next one. So keep an eye out for that. But anyway, the LCD GX versus the LCD2 Classic and 2 Phaser is gonna be an interesting one. Personally, I don't see much reason to buy the LCD2 Classic over the GX. The GX has a case, it's lighter, it's better built, it's more comfortable. The FR is much more normal. It has a microphone cable if you need it. And the only area where I think it might suffer compared to the two classic is the bass is not quite as impactful. But if you can sacrifice that, I think this is a much, much more compelling product for only $100 more than the LCD2 Classic. In my opinion, Odyssey should just kill the 2 Classic, make a version of this that's just not red, forget the mic cable, forget the case, and sell it for like $6.99, $5.99. And the 2 Classic, to me, is irrelevant because of the GX. 
Now compared to the two phasered, that one is, is a little bit more interesting. The two phasered, once again, much heavier, uh, does have a case, but no microphone, uh, less comfortable, and the FR is worse. But personally, I am still going to take the GX over the two phasered. Now, if you EQ, I can see buying the two phasered over the GX, but since I do not EQ and I always review headphones in stock form, I personally am going to take the GX over the two phasered. And in fact, for me personally, I'm going to take the GX over every other full-sized LCD headphone except for the four. For me, I'm going to go four and then the GX. Now, to, sp to spoil this a little bit, the GX is not on the technical level of some of the other ones like the X and the three. But the FR in tonality is so much better than all the other full-sized LCDs that I'm willing to make that sacrifice in overall slam and detail for just a much better tonality than the other Odyssey LCD headphones. So to me, this is my second favorite Odyssey headphone behind the LCD4. Now, also for me personally, for $900, I'm going to take the Aurora Audio Borealis over this. Much more detailed, much more dynamic. Uh, I don't think it's quite as comfortable, but it's obviously built a lot worse. And it's not a gaming headset. But for me, I like how the Borealis sounds a lot more than this. But I know a lot of you just can't do the, the looks and the build and whatever the Borealis. And if you want an Odyssey this is the one to buy. The GX is really good. It, like I said, it's my second favorite Odyssey headphone behind the LCD4. It has m very good FR and much more normal tonality. It's very l comfortable. It's m fairly light. It has a microphone that sounds pretty good. And I like the looks and everything. So all in all, the GX for $899 is a great package and it gets a very high recommendation from me. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Odyssey LCD GX. Um, definitely go look into picking one of these up because it is a great headphone. Once again, big thanks to headphones.com for sending this out for review. Links of where to buy this on their site in the description below, as well as my Twitter, the ears graph, uh, my contact email, and all other relevant information. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the review. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.